tonight to listen to nine extraordinary people. I should really say eight because I don't want to be sound too arrogant. But nine people who achieved something extraordinary, a feat. My own personal feat is that I'm a dyslexic boy from a small village in Ireland. I couldn't read and write and yet I stand before you today as an international best-selling author and I now travel the world and assist people with mindset and getting over roadblocks that get in the way of achieving whatever they want, whether it's in business, life, or sport. I don't stand here, in a sense, to tell you about being a best-selling author, to be arrogant, to, to put myself above anybody else, but to prove a point that your mindset creates and has the ability to allow you to create anything that you want to, but it can also get in your way. But I'm not here to talk about me, and I'm not here to talk about my story. What I'm really interested to know is what feat 350 or 400 people have within them that they haven't yet explored. I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment. Everybody in the audience, I'd like you to close your eyes. And I'd like you for a moment, I'd like you to raise your hand if you feel you have something left inside you that you haven't yet given or shown the world. Raise your hand high. If you've got something inside you that you're scared shitless to, to step into, something that you know you have left to give, or you don't know what it is, you can, raise, you can put, drop your hands in. You just don't know exactly what it is. You just know there's something left to give. You can open your eyes. Through the work that I do, if that is the case, if you feel that you haven't fully given this world everything that you can give, I know one thing that's absolutely certain, and that is that you are settling in somewhere in your life. You may be settling in multiple places in your world. You may be settling for a poor relationship. You may be settling for a crappy job. You may be settling for a business that doesn't fully fulfill you. You may be inspired tonight by one of the speakers and say, I want to do that ocean. I want to do that mountain, but how can I do it? I spend every day of my life as a young person with the, the following thoughts going through my head. Who the fuck is going to listen to me? Who is going to listen to Philip McKernan? Who am I to have a voice in this world? Settling, ladies and gentlemen, goes a little bit like this. You wake up in the middle of the night and you roll over in your bed and you see the back of his head and you say, and your gut is telling you, you don't love him anymore. You don't want to be in this relationship. Your guidance system is screaming at you. You can't sleep because you know you're out of integrity with your dreams and aspirations and the direction you should be going in your life. You pull back that duvet and you get out of that bed and you put your first foot on that cold floor. And it's a bit chilly and you walk towards the window. And as you get to the window, the big curtains are there and you pull back the curtains. And out there represents the future. Out there represents change. Out there represents something that you don't know. And it's dark. And it's wet. And it's windy. Not just because it's the North Shore. <laughs> and you're scared. And you don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. There is no hope. And you look back at that bed and you see him. You go, his jokes aren't that bad. He's kind of funny. He's not bad in bed. <laughs> you know what? I think I love him. And you close those curtains. And you walk back across that room. You get back into that bed. You pull that big duvet back across you. And the moment that duvet hits that mattress, you've settled again in your life. Because you don't want extraordinary. You want ordinary. 
There was a gentleman I was working with who couldn't get out of his own way in business. He kept wondering, why do I not succeed in business? He had all the intellect. He understood his business better than I would ever understand his business. But what was getting in front of him and in his way was him. He believed at the core. There's two reasons why human beings don't achieve stuff. One is they don't think they can do it intellectually. And the second, the stealth bummer that we're not aware of, is I don't feel I deserve it. And that is something that most of us aren't even aware of. This guy believed at the core he wasn't a finisher. And I'd love to tell you the background story, but I only have about nine and a half minutes because I did a deal with Sebastian outside the door. I bought him a beer and I bought his time. <laughs> but he believed he wasn't a finisher and was playing mayhem in his life and his business decisions and his business indecisions. And finally, he did a marathon one day. And halfway through the marathon, which looped past the starting point and a, and a car park, he actually walked into the, into the washrooms, took off his shirt, took off his bib, wiped his sweat, and was worried how he could get, looking at like a spectator, not to be embarrassed, to his car and get out of there. Through the deeper psychological work that he had done, and because he dug deep and considered the people that he had promised he was going to fulfill this dream with, he put that shirt back on, he put that bib back on, he walked outside that door and he finished that race and he finished that marathon for the first time in his life. It's not about the marathon. It has nothing to do with the race. It was the fact that he broke through that mental barrier to finish something in his mind for the first time in his life. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. And I dare you. I dare you, I haven't said this since I was in school, I triple dare you, <laughs> to take whatever feast you have within you, to, 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 to challenge yourself to admit where you're settling in life and make a change, to get out of that bed, walk across that room, get to that window, open back those curtains, open that window, jump out that window, because I promise you one thing. I absolutely guarantee you one thing. There's a guy at the under end of that road who's better in bed, who's more funnier than he'll ever be, who'll treat you better than that guy has ever treated you. Because you know what? You may not think it, but I believe that you deserve it. You have to believe in yourself, ladies and gentlemen. You have to because on many occasions no one else ever will. Thank you.